स्टूडेंट्स ट्रांसमिशन इम्पेरमेंट्स की बात चल रही है वी डिस्कस्ड अटेनुएशन वी डिस्कस डिस्टोशन नाउ वी आर गोइंग बी टॉकिंग अबाउट नोइस स्टूडेंट्स नोइस एनी काइंड ऑफ नोइस करप्ट्स आर सिग्नल नोइस कैन बी ऑफ मल्टीपल फॉर्म्स वी कैन हैव थर्मल नोइस वी कैन हैव इंड्यूस नोइस वी कैन हैव क्रॉस टॉक्स वी कैन हैव इम्पल्स नोइस बट एनी टाइप ऑफ नोइस इट करप्ट्स द ओरिजिनल सिग्नल thermal noise for example it can be due to the motion of electrons in the transmission medium so it's induced noise it can be um if your transmission medium is close to things like motors um that disturbs that creates the noise then you've got cross talk if you if there are two wires close together then that creates noise which is called cross talk impulse noise is another form of noise which is um happy it, it happens when a, a spike is created and the spike can be um a voltage spike can be due to lightning or any other catastrophic uh, reason so noise is our third source of transmission impairment which disturbs our signal let's go to the slide and discuss this in f- uh, further detail students so, as you can see on the slide we have got a uh, original signal which is transmitted we have got a uh, noise or an extra signal let's suppose it's transmitted um because of thermal noise and when these two signals meet we receive something at point 2 or the destination which is not an exact replica of the originally submitted uh, originally transmitted signal ab students a related concept of a signal to noise ratio students signal to noise ratio is the ratio of the average signal power or average signal strength divided by the strength of the noise or the power of the noise in both the cases we take average values because these two um uh, quantities they keep on changing their values so we always assume that we have got average values once again let's go to the slide and discuss these in further detail students so as you can see uh, we have got two cases one in which we have got a high signal to noise ratio the top one and then there is a second one where we have got the low signal to noise ratio so as you can see the amplitude of this signal input signal in the first case is higher than the amplitude of the second one signal strength is more in the first case as compared to the second one we have got noise and we have got noise here and what we receive on the uh, receiving end is a signal plus noise and signal plus noise but in both cases this is not uh, an exact replica of what we transmitted so students signal to noise ratio um, is nothing but a ratio of your signal strength or your signal power divided by your noise power so essentially what you are doing is you are creating a ratio or you are finding out a ratio of what is wanted and what is not required unwanted or not wanted students so um, a low snr means that our signal is more corrupted a high snr means that our signal is less corrupted and you can compare the two the top one which is high signal to noise ratio is still um, a slight replica of what we transmitted but in the second case there is no way this signal can be recreated or can be reproduced to what was originally transmitted students before we leave this uh, snr uh, topic we need to find out um, you know what does uh, how do we calculate snr now because um, snr is a ratio of two powers we describe or we represent that uh, by using the units of decibels so snr in dbs is equal to 10 log to the base 10 the actual ratio that you have calculated so this signal to noise ratio it needs to be converted into decibels using this formula right here 
Of students, um, we'll look at a couple of examples in which we have to calculate this signal-to-noise ratio. In the first one, the power of the signal is 10 millivolts, and the power of the noise is 1 microvolts. Both are powers. The units are watts. Students, we need to find out the signal-to-noise ratio and the signal-to-noise ratio in decibels. Students, how do we do that? In the first case, our SNR is equal to ten millivolts divided by our noise power, which is one microvolt. Um, if you do the maths, this comes out to be ten thousand. Of students, uh, as I've just explained it to you. To find out this SNR in dBs, what we do is we convert it into the dBs, 10 log to the base 10 of 10,000, which is equal to 40 decibels. Our signal-to-noise ratio is in decibels. So let's look at uh, another small example. The value of SNR and SNR dB for a noiseless channel, a channel in which the noise is equal to zero. This is not a real life scenario. So there is never, we have not come up with a channel at all which, is, um, which has got a noise of zero. But let's try to find out the SNR. In, the, in this particular case, we have got a um, signal power, whatever that power is divided by the noise power, which is zero. And therefore, our, our SNR is equal to 10 log to the base 10 of infinity, which is also equal to infinity, not real. So we, we cannot have a noiseless channel. There has to be some sort of noise, whether it's heat, whether it's induced noise, impulse, or whatever it is that we'll have in our transmission medium. 